guys, so today I'm going to show you an install on a 2019 Yamaha Wave Runner FX HO. I had a customer come to me and purchase a few of my products, including the 20 litre gas tank and the handlebar wind deflectors. And he also asked if I could install them and install a whole heap of other equipment, which I'll show you in a second. But yeah, he dropped a ski off the other day, so I'm going to start ripping into the install. I've already got the side fairings pulled off the ski here, so I'll start ripping into the rest of it soon and show you how it's done. So here we have the 20 litre auxiliary fuel tank for the 2019 and onwards Yamaha FX series. And here we have the handlebar wind deflectors, so we'll be installing them first up. And also, he's looking at mounting rod holders up the front of his ski and also maybe moving the fish finder currently from the right hand side onto the left hand side so he can use it while he is driving. And so for that, here we have the GC jet ski fishing mount, which we can mount the sounder on either side, whichever we want. And we can also mount sturdy rod holders up on the dashboard as well. And that also gives them a good base on here to mount something like his Railblazer boomstick which is used to mount GoPro, mount a GoPro up high or wherever you want it. A few other things he wanted me to also install was this live bait tank which will sit inside his chili bin. We've got a tap and a lid for the live bait tank there and some plumbing. He's got some underwater LED lights which will be going on the transom. I'll have to make a couple of brackets for them, that should be easy. Two LED nav lights which will go up the bow of the vessel on either side. There's a SeaTech comfort indicator and that just gives you a easy place to access your when you want to charge your batteries and it also gives you an indication of the current battery level on your ski so it's quite a handy thing to have. And here we have a waterproof switch panel to go inside the glove box, some Secreflex 291 which is Probably the best marine sealant you can use for if you ever have to drill through your hull or anything like that. That's that's what you want to use to seal it up afterwards. Uh, he's got a selection of just white LED lights, which he maybe wants one in the glove box so you can see in there. But he just said basically whatever works, go with that. And he's also got a couple of Railblazer star ports for mounting things like these two rod holders and also that boomstick. But yeah, so there's quite a selection of gear here and we will tuck into installing it. So first up I basically want to remove the rear seat and the main seat and you can see I've removed the glove box lid and that's just sitting there for now. Also these two side fairings which we have got, one of them is here. We can just set that aside for now. And once we've got that side fairing off it'll give us access to the back of his glove box where he wants to mount the switch panel and also the wiring to the fish finder and that sort of thing. So it's quite easy to get in there it's just a number of allen key screws and a few bolts and that will give you access. first job I'm going to look at is installing the waterproof switch panel and so the customer wants it in the back of the glove box here so I've actually removed the glove box just to give me good access to the back and make things a lot easier and make sure that I can do a nice job of it so basically it's going to go against the back wall it's a bit hard to see it'll go in against the back wall like that as long there's nothing getting in the way back here but looking at that I'll just double check the measurements of everything of the steering adjustment and then I'll start cutting some holes. So the switch panel came with a little paper template like this and that basically gives you your holes and you can see we've run into a little bit of a problem down here. The inside of the glove box is actually curved there so it may not actually work. Might have to think about a way of getting around that but 
otherwise that gives you your perfect mounting holes and the cutout that you need to cut. So we'll just have a bit of a think about this curved bit here and see whether that's going to be an issue before we carry on. So we've gone ahead and cut out our nice square template and drilled in our four mount, uh, four bolt holes for each corner and now we can test fit the unit and see how it fits. It seems to fit in there nice and snug so we know the hole is big enough. And now we basically just want to seal it in there. And because of this curve at the bottom, we might just have to use a bit of Secaflex around there just to make it watertight. So as you can see on the outside, we've got the switchboard all mounted in there. The top screws were fine that came with the kit, but on the bottom, I just had to install longer screws. And I'll have to seal up this gap in the bottom that we can see the light coming through. Let's have a look inside, it's the switchboard. You can just see that in the bottom of the panel there, there's a um, bit of a gap that we'll have to seal up. But apart from that, she's mounted in there nice and solid. And we can move on to the next step. So next up we want to look at the nav lights. And so once I've got them out of the packet, I will have a look around here, somewhere probably this area, to install them. That's where I've installed them on my ski, just under the mirror. And they look nice against the lines of the sticker there. And they're nice and tucked out of the way. And they don't shine in your eyes or anything like that. So... There is an air duct just behind here that you have to be aware of. But yeah, once I take them out of the packet, I can start test fitting them and find a spot for them to go. So I put the ski back together with the fairings on and the lid, the front storage hatch shut. And I put the test fit the lights up. And this gasket that goes underneath them actually has the bolt hole patterns and the two holes for the wires to go through. So you can use that as a template for where the holes need to be. And as you can see I've marked the four holes there and now I'll drill them and fit the lights. So as you can see we've now got the nav light installed and screwed into position and we can clip the outer shell back on. So it clips on like that. And now we can test fit it and see how it looks. What's actually happened here is when fitting the fairing is I knew this came quite close and you can see two marks here from where the screws have actually contacted with this and they're stopping the fairing from sitting down low properly. But as you can see they give you very long screws much longer than we need here so we just need to trim those screws back to make them fit. So I've trimmed those two screws and I've refit the fairing again and we'll just make sure that it's not getting held up anywhere it's not bolted on at the moment but it's sitting flat so perfect now i can put the cover back on that light so it's a few days later and i'm getting back onto the install the install on this fxho and i didn't film it because i've already got a video on how to install one of the gc That's all in there, I just need to cut the plastic wall, which is down here. Cut that to make it fit properly, nice, neat and tidy. And I also removed the fish finder. So I also removed the fish finder and his old mounting bracket. And we have started to install the GC jet ski fishing mount mounting system. So he's going to swap his fish finder from the right hand side onto the left hand side and he's going to have rod holders on the right hand side as well. And so he wanted the fish finder on the left hand side just so he, can, he doesn't have to let off the throttle to um, use his fish finder when he's moving so he can zoom in and out on maps and that sort of thing. It's entirely personal preference which side you want the fish finder on but yeah we'll do that and I'll swap that over to this side for him and once we've got this mount in this is also a good nice sturdy place to mount one of his railblazer star ports and he can mount his camera boomstick on there so yeah so we will 
get back into the install and see how much we can get done. So here we have the cut black plastic wall and now we've got to reinstall that back into the front hatch. So next on the list for the install is the SeaTech comfort indicator and that just has a blinking LED on there to indicate your battery level and it also has a socket for you to plug your battery charger into. Much easier than having to reach into your hull down to your batteries to hook up your charger when you need it. So yeah we'll get this installed maybe in the glove box. You can see I've mounted the SeaTech comfort indicator and charging port in the back of the glove box as well. On the other side this area here is taken up by the steering column so you can't put anything there. So you put that there nice and tidily and we'll move on to the next job. The customer wanted a couple of these Railblazer star ports mounted and he wanted one mounted up on the dash area but the problem was the plastic's quite flimsy. So what we're going to do is since he's changing to the GC jet ski fishing base mount and rod holders, this is 8mm thick aluminium so we can mount it on here and it'll be sturdy as anything. So I've just drilled and tapped two holes there for the for the Railblazer starport and we will install it there and then he'll have a Railblazer fitting on his dashboard. So the customer also wanted a LED light in the glove box. I don't know whether you can see it there. into the depths of the glove box when it's dark outside I guess and next on the list of things to do was to install underwater LED lights on the transom so what I've got here this is one of the lights and basically that wants to go down around there somewhere will be the best place for them just out of the line of the hull so the water doesn't hit it full on and the same on the other side and that's just a generic kit with no mounting brackets or anything so I have just whipped up these two stainless brackets and basically I will just weld this onto the other one something like that I might just have to trim it a little bit first but it'll go something like that and then the light will bolt to the underside of it and she'll be good as gold. So now I've got the underwater LED lights mounted. I've got the right one here, we've just mounted that off the transducer bracket. And the left one here, and that's just, they put a stainless steel spacer in there when they use the transducer bracket on the other side, so I've just welded to that spacer, and it's worked out quite well. There's plenty of clearance on this side. The only thing is this one, it's quite in line with the hull. I don't think it's going to cause any issues when running, it's not really protruding at all, but if it is we can move it, but we'll just see how it goes like that for now. Next up we are doing some wiring, and so I've just wired in the LEDs to the LED driver boxes, and then they will get wired into the power supplies, and those are all soldered connections with resin cord heat shrink as well, just for maximum protection against salt water. So we're getting into the guts a bit. Got a little bit of a wiring mess here at the moment, but she'll be tidied up soon. And then once we hook that lead up to positive and negative of the battery, then she should be all good to go. We've finished tidying up the wiring and just cable tied the wires up out of the way on the back for the LED lights, nice and tidy. Um, resealed them back where they go through the hull. And still have to run them neatly inside the hull at the moment but that won't take long. Now we'll put the front end back together so all the fairings are back on and glove box and steering and all that assembly is back together and check out the new setup on the dash. So we've got the GC Jessica Fishing base mount and then the right hand rod holders and then the sounder on the left hand side. And we've also put the sounder splash guard on the back of there to keep it protected from salt water splashes and mounted a railblazer there. So that's a nice solid mount and he can run his camera boomstick off there. And so yeah, 
that's their splash guard and that will also give you good protection for your sounder on the road as well in case any rocks hit the back of it that will save it so it's a nice solid mount and it ain't going nowhere it actually brings a sounder closer to his reach as well he had to reach a little bit further for it before but now it's a little bit closer so you should like that as well uh, wind deflectors on the handlebars they're installed nav lights switch panel in the glove box LED light SeaTac charger on the other side but yeah she's coming together good she's looking like a brand new ski also since I had all these fairings off and had the bolts out I went ahead and put stainless replacement bolts in there um, free of charge you can see the difference here that's an old one and that isn't even very exposed to the salt water but that's the difference between the factory corroded ones and nice new stainless ones and they're not just a cap screw they're a button head with a larger flange surface as well so I've just got them there 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 at the front as well just the bolts I had out I've just replaced them free of charge for the customer just to keep his ski looking nice pretty much done for all the electrical side of things just to recap we've got the two underwater bait lights down the back uh, handlebar wind deflectors fish finder mounted on the left rod holders rail blazer on the old GC mount and up the front we've got fuel tank it's all nice and tidy in there now plastic walls been trimmed and put back in place so it looks all factory um, in the glove box we've got all the switch panel an LED and a CTEC charger cigarette lighter and in the hull here I've just run the wiring down the side along the siphon tubes down to the back so yeah I can put the seat back on and have a look at the lifebait tank I'm not sure what we're going to do there yet but I'll have a look at it and then have a chat to the customer and see what he wants to do I've just put the ski back together switched the battery switch on and just powered everything up to see if it's working so your LED light in the glove box is working sound is working nav lights red and green they're both working and if we come down to the back you can see our bait lights underwater LEDs so those are really bright as well it doesn't really show up much at the moment because it's daytime but at night they're really bright so yeah looking good so far we can carry on with the light bait tank so here we have the bait tank that the customer supplied it was just a sealed container pretty much what you can see from the back here and the customer did supply a um, twist hatch style lid but it was only maybe that sort of diameter and um, can be quite hard to get a live bait out of there if you can't really you're not going to be able to get a net in there anyway so what I did is I just cut out a large area of the top plate and drilled a few holes made a simple cable tie hatch put a bit of aluminium in there bolted it through and gave them a little latch so there we have it so now it stays shut won't come open you just press the top of that pin with your thumb, lift up, and it releases the latch. Easy as that. Simple, cheap, and effective, which is what the customer wanted. And that's just going to be plumbed into his, um, into the visibility spout on the back of the Yamaha with a bit of 6mm tube just to restrict the uh, flow a bit. And we've got some drain holes drilled here. And this will all be sitting inside his chili bin and that'll just drain out into his bin and then out the bung out the side of the bin so a nice simple but effective um, life bait tank i'd say the customer would be pretty happy with that got the life bait tank system all plumbed in and ready to go so if we open the chili bin here 
You see the tank just sits inside there. And that was a completely sealed tank. I just cut a lid out, put a little latch, and um, so the lid clips shut. It's going to come open, clips shut like that. It's got a little tap to control the flow going in there, and you just disconnect that hose clamp if you want to take it out. Uh, a little bung on the other side for draining the tank. And that just goes in through the bung hole inside of the chili bin, so you just leave that out as a life bait tank drain when you're, when you're life baiting. And that's just got a bit of hose nice and tidy through the original spout line and down onto the original spout on top of the jet pump. So that's a nice tidy install of a life bait tank which will just sit in this chili bin and it's removable when you just want to use it. Here we have it, she's GC certified.